So I was 13 years old when I lost mum. Still sits very clear in my mind what, what went down that day. I was actually at school um, doing a nap plan test, which I actually hated at the time, but I was like, I got a call over the um, PA system at school and um, walked outside and dad was there. And I, my mum was really sick at this time and yeah, jumped in the car with dad and then kept his cool the whole time and pretty much we walked in the door and he just burst into tears and we sort of knew exactly what had happened. We grew up really quickly. Um, after, I guess, losing mum, we had to become quite accountable for each other and look after each other through, I guess, a period that we didn't have a mother. I remember one day she sat me down and she said, um, do you know who Delta Goodrum is? And I was like, oh, yeah, she's the singer from that show. And she was like, oh, do you remember how she lost all of her hair? And I was like, yeah, I remember. And she was like, okay, well, that's about to happen to mummy and, and um, everything will be okay. Like, um, it'll be all right. We're just gonna get a little bit sick for a little while and then, then it will be okay. Um, so I think being 11 and hearing that and well, I know that I didn't feel the gravity of it through that conversation. I had no idea what was coming or what was um, about to happen. And she sadly passed away when I was 12 and my baby sister was one. When she got the original diagnosis, she was given three weeks to live and she survived 14 months after that. So she lived longer than they thought she would. Yeah, something that I have thought about a lot is how it must have all felt for her. I think being 11, when I got the news, I had no idea what was going on. I didn't understand the, um, the severity of it or the impact that it would have on the rest of my life. I think being mum and finding out that you have three weeks left with your family and your daughters. Um, yeah, I can't even imagine having to know that, that your life is ending so soon. I was diagnosed at 27 and as far as I knew, most people that were diagnosed were in their 40s, 50s or older. I didn't know anybody that had ever been diagnosed under the age of 45. Uh, so it was quite confronting because I had an 18 month old child. I just assumed that uh, everybody else got cancer and you never expect it to happen to you. So to be told your results come back and it looks like you've got breast cancer was definitely a shock and changed the course of my life. When she got my folder out and she said to me, so your results came back and it looks like you have breast cancer. I had this moment that it's just, I didn't even hear anything else she said. You know, the, you know, I could see her lips moving and all I could think of was that I just needed to get home to, to see my husband. And um, it was just sort of a blur. Um, I don't remember anything else that she said um, up until she opened the door and she just looked me in the eye and she said to me, I don't want you to be under any illusion of the journey you're about to embark on and the difficulty you're about to endure. And that for the first time was when I started to cry because when she said that, it made me think that maybe I wasn't gonna be around to see my child grow up. And as a parent, that's the worst thing that you could ever imagine is not being able to see your babies grow up. We just kind of learnt to live with our mum being crook and mum also was one of those fighters that in her battle tried everything so you know mum was going to Adelaide once a week which is uh, four and a half hours from from Horsham so taken off on a Wednesday not seeing her till a Friday or or something like that just to get the best treatment that was available to her to try and knock this disease on, on its head. Early on I was so raw to know what was happening like I still remember it was what year, year one or two and I walked into the, into the garage and they started shaving off her hair and I was, I burst into tears because I didn't want my mum to be bald. And now I look back at it now, it's like, I couldn't care less. Um, and it was so, like, now that, yeah, that I'm grown up and mature, it's like, it was the same person. I loved every every bit of my life spending with her and it was, it was hard to see her. Um, hurting so much, but 
was so grateful that we got to spend so much of our life with her as well. So she passed away when I was 12, um, when I was in grade seven and then I had um, kind of six months, I went straight back to school. Afterwards, I think I had two weeks off and then went straight back into it and um, life kind of just happens. And then all of a sudden I was starting high school and um, I didn't tell anyone. I didn't tell anyone at school until, well, I honestly don't think I told anyone except my closest friends because I wasn't ready to talk about it. And I didn't tell anyone when I was growing up because I didn't want for anyone to feel sorry for me. I just wanted to not talk about it. And then as I kind of grew older and, and realised that a lot of my friends had these amazing connections with their mum and I didn't really have any of that. So it was easier to not talk about it. I obviously feel it every day still, but it is something that I'm now able to talk about. And I think once I was comfortable to talk about it, it opened so many amazing doors for me. Like I became friends with other people who had lost their parents at a young age. Um, and so much, so many of my family members that I had never talked to that had also lost my mum, I was able to talk to them about it and um, was able to kind of connect with them. And even my nan, my mum's mum, we didn't have our first real conversation about the magnificent loss that we both felt until I was in my late teens. So it was just, it was really hard. And I think I like didn't deal with it. So, yeah. I think the biggest impact for me was um, the worry of whether I would see my son grow up and whether he would have memories of me. He was only 18 months, like I mentioned. And um, I went home and I started to write letters and um, I had my husband record some, some video of myself delivering messages to my son. I wanted to deliver messages for his first day of school um, and for his first day of high school, his graduation, you know, the birth of his first child and his wedding. And um, I, I really wanted to make sure that if I wasn't going to be around for, you know, the important milestones in his life, that at least he would have a piece of me with him. And so that was really hard, you know, to, to think about that you were going to potentially not see your son grow up and that he potentially might not remember you. So um, that, that was definitely very one of the hardest things I had to do. I think her main thing um, in the later stages of the battle was just appreciating every moment that we got together, talking as a family, um, get to know each other on that level that, you know, you might not be um, exposed to until you're 20 or even 30 when you mature, but we were exposed to it when we were, when we were little because we wanted to know our mum and she wanted to know us on that, that really deep level that she knew she was comfortable, um, I guess, leaving us in this, this, this big bad world and knowing that we're going to do well and know we're going to um, hold ourselves with the, the morals that she taught us when she, when she left us, I reckon she would have known that we, we were going to be okay. Mum was 37 when she died, which is like 12 years older than me right now, which is absolutely nuts. I think that she showed an amazing amount of strength outliving her diagnosis of three weeks to 14 months. But within that, it could have been so different if she did get it checked sooner. I think that knowing how fragile life is and kind of having such a deep understanding of how fragile it is from such a young age has made me a very grateful person because I know that not the next day is definitely not guaranteed. It's nice to live in that kind of mindset because you kind of are grateful for how great life can be. I think it's really nice kind of sitting in a um, mind state of gratitude because you really do appreciate all of the little things and to make sure that you are getting the most out of every day and that you are hugging the shit out of your family and your friends and you're making them know that you love them and that you are having fun and experiencing new things and exploring and making the most out of this actually very short life. So one of the biggest lessons I probably have is just to not take things for granted. Um, and that goes with anything. 
you know, um, you take for granted that, you know, you're going to have boobs forever. You take for granted that you're going to have hair. Um, You know, I think to just really never just assume that tomorrow is promised and that um, it's so important to just make good connections. You know, I've thankfully got a wonderful family, a wonderful supportive family, and I've got wonderful friends that have stuck with me throughout um, the whole process. Um, And, you know, I just really love spending time with those people that create great great feelings and great connections because you know life is really too short as cliche as it sounds and you just don't know what's around the corner. Gratitude of being with people is so important. I reckon if you ask anyone in our family if they could have one more thing it'd be spend another day with mum and that's I guess got taken away from us really early but it's just like I guess we see families that fight and brothers that don't get along and that's so hard to see as us boys now it's like geez you they should be your best mate like the people around you they're your family um they got your back no matter what yeah i think it's pretty pretty important to really value the people that have come into your life and your friends and your family they're such important people and they have your back through everything so because uh, yeah as you said once it goes it you fucking miss it it's probably one of those things that doesn't discriminate on age or health or anything like that. It could affect an obese person or it could affect a footballer, an athlete, you know. Potentially if we caught this thing that, that happened to mum early, she might be still here or she might have um, been around for a little bit longer. We don't know. Health is the number one thing. You've only got one body, you've only got one mind. Make sure you look after them. I think my younger sister and I are the perfect example of why you should get checked. We, um, if my mum had been able to detect this earlier, who knows what could have happened. We could have been living a very different life right now and I actually think about that all the time. I think that it is so important for women to take it into their own hands to make sure that they are getting checked and to make sure that they are um, aware of if something doesn't feel right, go and get it checked. Or if you have a feeling, go and talk about it with someone. Or if you just feel like something isn't right, whether you talk to your friend or your family or you go and see a doctor, just make sure that you put it out there because you really never know what results are going to come back from that. It could be great and it could be not great. And if it's not great, you can figure it out. But it'd be so much better to know about it than it'd be too late and then it'd be too late. I wish that I'd known that breast cancer can happen to anyone that has breast tissue. I wish that I'd known that it could happen to you in your 20s. I wish I'd known that it was something that can happen to men. Um, I wish that I'd known that it's not a death sentence. And I wish that I'd had someone that I could have looked to um, to give me hope. To, to be 12 years in remission now and look back and say, well, not only did I kick cancer's ass, I was able to go on and with the help of science, have another child as well, which, you know, statistically just is not something that people could fathom. To be able to go on and actually have my own child after everything that I went through um, really gives people hope. And I love that it gives them hope. I love that I can talk about my experience and. I think that's really, really great that we can sort of band together and be connected on something that's a really terrible thing. So I really love um, that I can maybe give hope to other people, um, no matter what their age. I hope I give hope to women that are in an older age bracket, but I hope also if there's any women out there that um, are young like I was, um, that they can look to me and know that their future is bright.